Thank you very much, choristers. Um, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. Uh, we thank God for giving us an opportunity to come back for the afternoon session. Um, technical team kindly amplify so that those who are uh, outside can get us clearly. Maybe the temperatures inside are so high, they may not stay inside. So increase our volume so that when I speak, they can get clearly from outside. Yes, um, today uh, we are going through a wonderful Sabbath. Hospital Chaplaincy Ministries is one of the ministries in this church. And uh, we have... Uh, a Sabbath that is uh, guided by the hospital chaplaincy department. This afternoon we are going to do a Bible study. And uh, the Bible study is titled, The Forgotten Signs of the End Times. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be a bit prophetic. The Forgotten Signs of the End Time. Pay attention as we go through the afternoon Bible study. A Bible study is a way in which we spend more time digging deep into the scriptures that we may hear what God has to speak to us through his word. Our presentation will anchor mainly on two chapters of the Bible. Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25. I'd like to request that we bow our heads, close our eyes, as we have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's one of those moments I appreciate the fact that you've allowed us to be living at this time. So God, speak to us in this hour and help us that we may be ready for your second coming. Help us that we may be able to understand your word and be ready for what you've prepared for us, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Without much ado, turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. So many verses. Matthew 24 has 51, Matthew 25 has 46. So beloved, I am uh, working on 97 verses within the next few minutes. 97 verses, let's look at it. In Matthew chapter 24 and reading from verses 1, the Bible says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came for to show him the buildings of the temple. Matthew 24 reading from verses 2 says, And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So Jesus meets with the disciples and tells the disciples, look at all this. No stone will be left upon another. Matthew 24, reading from verses 3, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came privately unto him, saying, now listen to this. This is a critical part. The disciples asked Jesus certain things. Number one, tell us when shall these things be? You see, Jesus has said the temple shall be destroyed. The disciples are asking, tell us when will the temple be destroyed? Number one. Number two, and what shall be the sign of your coming? And number three, what shall be the sign of the end of the world? Now, beloved, we need to know the signs of the end of the world because we are living in the last days. When you look at it, Jesus said in verses 4, he answered them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Jesus says, be careful about deception. And beloved, there is a possibility that we may even be seated in church and we are deceived. So take heed that you are not deceived. Now, Jesus warns about deception. 
And, and, and I am not going to spend so much time for lack of time. I may come back to chapter 24 on all these signs if I have more time. But since we are talking of hospital chaplaincy, let me explain something. Matthew 24, the question is asked in verses 3. Now, if you have the red letter edition of the Bible, where the words of Jesus are covered in red letter texts, you will realize that Jesus began answering from Matthew 24 verses 4 and Jesus spoke all the way up to Matthew 25 verses 46. Now why I am talking of the forgotten signs of the end time, let me tell you the ones that we've not forgotten. The ones that we know clearly and we've not forgotten. When the Bible talks about the signs of the end time in Matthew 24 verse 7, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom shall rise against kingdom. There shall be famines, there shall be earthquakes, there shall be pestilences in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now that one is a sign of the end time that is preached everywhere. No one has forgotten that. In fact, when we don't see some of these things, we don't think that we are in the end times. When we have famine, when there is drought like we had the other day, you know that we are living in the end times. But let me tell you something. In Matthew chapter 24, we have geopolitical signs of the second coming. These are signs in the geographical world and signs in the political world. Geopolitical signs. So you will hear about wars. You will hear about rumors of wars. And you will hear of pestilences. We are talking COVID and we know we are in the last days. Those are signs in Matthew 24. Now church, walk with me to the other side. You see, Matthew 24, I've told you, is not our focus. Now, Jesus decided to say that I am not only going to give you signs in the physical world. I'm not only going to give you signs in the geographical world. I'm not only going to give you signs in the political world. I will give you signs as well in the spiritual world. Now, Matthew 25 is dedicated to us understanding the signs of the end time in the church. Now, listen to this very carefully. Matthew 25 is dedicated for us. This one, you have an influence. You know, in Matthew 24, you have no influence. You cannot influence the earthquakes. You can't. You're not going to influence the pestilences. COVID came and you had no influence. Now, Matthew 25 shows us the signs in the end time for which we have influence. Now, listen to Matthew 25 verses 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened like unto ten virgins which took their lambs. Now, Jesus is saying, I am going to liken the kingdom of heaven to ten virgins who took their lambs. In the wonderful book, Christ Object Lesson, page 406, paragraph 4, the messenger to the remnant says this. Jesus told his disciples the story of the ten virgins by their experience illustrating the experience of the church that should live just before the coming of Jesus. So the parable of the ten virgins is a sign of the end time, but this is a sign in the church. So look for this sign, not out there. Don't look for this sign in the news. Look for this sign in the church. So let's start asking questions. He says there were five wise and five foolish, two categories. Wise virgins, now listen, virgins, for those who have done Bible study and Bible prophecy, virgins represent a pure church. 
The signs in Matthew 25, we are not talking about the apostate church. We are not talking about Babylon. We are talking about signs in God's pure church. Now listen to this. Five virgins were wise. Five virgins were foolish. Now listen. The Bible says they took their lamps. All of them, the ten of them had lamps. What do lamps represent in Bible prophecy? You have read it. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Every one of them had a Bible. I know it's, it's good, you know. They told me that I was doing Bible study. How many of you have their Bibles? No, put it up. Let's see. Hey, there were five, ten, and five foolish. Now, we are learning about the foolish virgins and the wise virgins, but all of them had lamps. They had their Bibles. Where is your Bible, church? Hey, church members, just put up your Bible. I don't have to sing my Bible. Let's see. Okay, put them down. Could it be the reason others have not come in? They don't have Bibles. Okay, I don't know. But every one of them had a Bible. So this is a parable to those who have Bibles. Point number one. But five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Now, the line of demarcation is foolishness and being wise. Foolishness and wisdom. That is the line of demarcation. Not wicked and righteous. Foolishness and wise. And listen. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Yes, oil you understand represented by the Holy Spirit. So there are people, oh, church, how many of you have the Holy Spirit? No, this one you don't put up your hand. No, there are questions you raise your hands, then there are some you just answer in your heart. How many of us have the Holy Spirit? Now you see, the demarcation of wisdom is the Holy Spirit. Here I know you say, oh, the Holy Spirit is for the other churches. It is for this church. That's why in John chapter 4 it says, in the last days, true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We must have the Holy Spirit or else we will be filled with other spirits. But, 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 but let me go quickly. It says in verses 5 of Matthew 25, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered. How many slept? How many slept? When the bridegroom delayed, how many slept? All. The wise and the foolish slept. Listen to that. As in everyone, even those who had their Bible, they slumbered. But now listen, the demarcation comes here. The Bible says, at midnight, a cry was made. Now, when things became tough, you know, crises have a way of revealing what is in you. We say character is, is expressed or we, we exhibit our character in a crisis. We don't develop character in a crisis. If you are a child of God, you must believe in God before the persecution. Don't think that when they want to kill people is when you will be believing in God. That is the time to prove that you had believed in God. The time to study your Bible is now, not when we will be having the temptation. Do you know by the time we are tempted, it is too late to study the Bible? Look, look, look at Jesus in the wilderness. When Jesus was saying it is written, he did not say, hey, the devil, you said turn the stones into bread. Let me go read first. Hey, pastor, where are you to explain to us the verse that says, no. Beloved, the forgotten signs of the end times, listen to this one. It says there were foolish virgins and this is in the church. All those virgins, they, the Bible says they trimmed their lambs. The foolish said to the wise, give us your oil. Now let me tell you, there are certain things that you cannot share. This issue of coming to church and you're saying, help me with your Bible, I check. Please come with your Bible. As in, you're fulfilling the signs of the end time seriously. As in, as in this church, I don't know. This issue of children thinking that their praying mothers will take them to heaven, be careful. As in, don't think.
think because you are the child of an elder, all of a sudden you have been born to be an elder. And don't think because you are an elder, all of a sudden you are going to heaven. Beloved, there is such a thing as the Holy Spirit. You may have a Bible and you are foolish. Let me tell you, if you want to know that it is tough, <laughs> you know, it's, it's nice when you are preaching at home, when you are preaching at home and you are preaching to people who know you. If you want to know how tough life can be, ca can you imagine <laughs> one day elders were seated somewhere. These are, these are new life elders. The problem with me at times I speak under inspiration and I forget to be gagged. One day new life elders were seated somewhere thinking of how to convince church members to come into church in the afternoon. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Church members have gotten to that level. They come to church in the afternoon and they don't want to sit in church. And they're waiting for elders to convince them to come inside. Now that is tough. But don't worry, we are in the end times. You know, you know there are signs. My sister, just try so that you don't fulfill the signs. I know after this you are going to crucify me, but don't worry. We are approaching Easter. Now listen. When the foolish ones asked for the oil of the wise ones, listen to this. The Bible says the foolish asked for the oil. Give us your oil. Our lamps are gone out. The wise said not so. We can share everything but not this oil. And let me tell you, an experience with Jesus Christ is what will take us to heaven. Every other thing we can do, we can argue, we can have everything, but we need an experience with Jesus Christ. That's why I'm talking of the forgotten signs of the end times. And listen, you know the old story. The bridegroom came when the others went to get oil, the door was locked and they were told you can't come in. That is sign number one in the church. Foolish and wise. Let's go to sign number two. Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his goods. Now listen. The man traveled to a far country. He gave his servants his goods. Now this is the right time to ask each and every one of us, what things have you been given by the master? What things have we been given? We are talking of uh, hospital chaplaincy Sabbath and, and we are talking of the chaplaincy ministry. But let me ask, what talents have you been given? Now, now, now this sign of the end time is a serious one. Because this one, this one we know how to fulfill. How many of you can sing? You can sing? Those who can sing? O okay, you can just open your mouth and sing anything. Anything. Let's see. I've not said you are gifted in singing. You can sing. Those are two different things. Okay. Okay, put down your hands. Now, if you can sing, let's get serious with life. What, what are you doing with your talent of being able to sing? I know you're saying, but you know me, I don't sing like so and so. We don't want you to sing like the other person. We want you to sing like yourself. Be unique. You know, I've, I've realized those who are musical are interesting. Somebody can even be singing something that is so off. But because he has a unique voice, all of a sudden we think that is serious. And, 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 and you, somebody just said that you are singing off. And, and you're worried. Don't be worried. You can sing. Sing. What do you do with your talent? How many of you can talk? Talk. Open your mouth. Talk. We are talking of the forgotten. Those who can talk. Let's see. Okay. What are you normally talking about? You see, the, the, the biggest challenge we have is, and, and, and I'm shocked. You know, nowadays... There are certain topics you start talking about. Somebody is com commenting and contributing wonderfully. Here you come to church, ask about the Ten Commandments. They are looking at you. Did, did you hear what that child did during a children's story? Did you hear the child who talk about love? 
a small child reciting 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and reciting it like that. And you are an adult here. The only thing you are saying is amen. As in, sincerely speaking, with over 30 years, 40 years, 60 years, you are on planet earth. How many Bible verses do you know? Okay. Okay, preacher, don't go in that direction. Okay, I've stopped. You know, those who are inside may walk out. Let me change my tactic so that I can retain you. I'm not changing. Listen. The Bible says in verses 15 of Matthew 25, and unto one he gave five talents. The first one was given how many talents? Hey, church, the first one was given how many talents? Five. And to the second he gave two. And to the third he gave one. Now listen to what the Bible says. And I know you can say this is unfair. Why are others given more than me? Okay, how many of you are short? Those were short. Hey, my sister, just put up your hand. How many of you are short? Yes, yes, courageous short ones like Jeff have put up their hands. How many of you are tall? Okay, okay, Elder Thomas put up the hand. Now can I tell you something? All of you are given height of varying nature. Now let's read. You have various talents, the short ones and the tall ones. He gave to every man according to his several ability. Say amen. Let me explain. When you are given height that reaches here, it is according to your what? Ability. When you are given height here, it's according to your what? Ability. Now let's go to the other thing. When you are given even intellect, it's according to your what? Church, you are refusing to understand. It's according to your what? When God decides to give you money, it's according to your what? When God decides to give you gifts, it's according to your what? Every man according to his several ability. So God knew I need people for the last days. He gave according to their ability. Now listen to the parable of the talent, which you know very well. The first man who was given five talents, what did he do? What did he do? What did he do? Hey, church, the first man was given five talents. What did he do, Elder Erastus? He multiplied the five talents and came with five more, isn't it? His ability was five and he multiplied the five, isn't it? Now, the next man who was given two talents, what did he do? Yes. He multiplied the two and came with an additional two, isn't it? Now, the third man who was given one, what did he do? Hey, this child is too intelligent in class today. He went and buried it in the soil. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The next exam, may you be number one. Now, the Bible says, the one who was given one, buried it in the soil. Now, I want you to listen to the arguments of everyone. You know, be careful about how you argue. At times, your argument can expose how serious or how you lack seriousness. Matthew chapter 25, reading from verses 20. The Bible says, anyway, we have 15 more minutes, then there will be a panel talking on hospital chaplaincy. So let me, I'm preparing you for the panel, so don't worry. Now listen to Matthew 25, 20. It says, So he that received five talents came with another five and said to the master, Lord, you delivered unto me five. I have gained five besides the one you gave me. Now listen to that. And his Lord said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few. I will make you ruler over many things. Now I want you to understand something. Uh, how many of you have children? How many have children? Uh, who is courageous? Who is near me? How many children do you have? You have three. You have three children. God has delivered to you three children. Three. How many more have you gained? Leave the ones that the Lord delivered unto you. 
the ones you've gained. Listen, in this church, when we say, I will go, the Lord has purpose that when he blessed you with one child, you are supposed to go and gain more children in the kingdom. It is not only your child. Listen. And God is going to ask you one day, how many have you gained? When God opens opportunity for us to go and minister, I, I, I saw you are being begged over here to contribute towards TMI. There are things you don't need to be begged to do. Evangelistic campaign is coming. Beloved, that is our in-gathering. You as a child of God, ask yourself, what have you done for the kingdom evangelistically this year? What have you done? You gave me three children. God has blessed me with two. But I need to tell God, God, you gave me two. I have gained for you, for the kingdom, another 20. Hey, how many are understanding the gospel? If you are understanding, say amen. Listen, don't cry so much about your one child who is giving you an headache. Listen, God wants you to gain more. I know there are some of us who have even suspended their evangelistic exploits because they are saying, preacher, you don't know this one is... The one who is struggling with you, leave that one. Go and gain 15. Until even the one who is struggling joins saying, if, if you've left me to gain 15, let me be number 16. And, and listen, that person was told, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few, I'll give you more. Now listen to the next one. He that received two talents went and said, you delivered to me too. I have gained two others beside them. In other words, apart from what you gave me, I have gained two others. You know, I was asking you, how many of you know how to sing? If you are talented in singing, what other talent have you gained? What, what other thing? Please do something extra for the Lord. We are in the end times. We must receive greetings from Mount Olives SDA Church. I was with them last week. I was preaching there last Sabbath. Now, I, I was telling them last Sabbath, and I read a quotation that was saying that God wishes that we could devise every means necessary to reach people. I have gained two more. Now listen. Then it says, uh -huh. the one who received one talent said, Lord, I knew you are a hard man who likes reaping where you don't sow. How, how do you even talk to your master like that? You, you, you can see, even the reasoning of the one who had little talent, even his reasoning is pathetic. How do you come to your boss and tell your boss, I know you're a hard man who likes reaping where you've not put effort. Part of the effort I put was to put you there. That is what the Lord says. Jesus doesn't have to come here to preach. He put you and me to preach here. Now listen to the text. It says, I was afraid. Ah, I like this one. Even if I don't have time, this one I have to explain. The reason the man who had one talent did nothing, he was what? He was what? He was what? Listen, how many of us are afraid? Do you know one of the reasons we are not evangelizing in any way? I was afraid. Hospital chaplaincy department is going to come here and talk to you about how they want you to participate in hospital chaplaincy, why are you not joining hospital chaplaincy? I was what? Afraid. Why are we not participating in prison ministry? I was what? Afraid. And that's why I asked you how many of you can talk. We need to reach people with Jesus. We are in the end times. The forgotten signs of the end times. Let me finish developing this. It says, I was afraid and went and hid the talent. Here is what is yours. The Lord said, thou wicked and slothful servant. You are a wicked and lazy servant who is given a talent and multiplies nothing. Beloved, our God is in the principle of mathematics, multiplication. That's why he said, go be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Our God is specific with the things he wants us to do. Now listen. The Bible says, 
uh, verse 28. Take the talent from him. Give to the others who are useful. That's what was done. That is the second sign. Those who don't use their talents. Jesus, by the way, just explains that in the last days, you will see people who are talented, but they will not use their talent for God at all. They will be afraid to use their talents for God. So when you see these things, when you see people afraid of using their talent for God, know we are in the end times. Now, number 31, the verse. Chapter 25, 31, verse. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations. Now listen to this. In fact, I, I wish you were like me. I, when I preach, I run into my sanctified imagination. Picture Jesus seated on his throne of glory and all the nations are surrounding him. And the Bible says, and before him shall be gathered all the nations and he shall separate one from another. Now listen, the sign of the end time is not Jesus separating. The sign of the end time is how you choose which side you are on. How you will be separated is the sign. Now listen to this. And he shall divide the sheep from the goat. How many of you are sheep? Okay, I know these are the points you're saying, preacher, that should be rhetoric. This is not rhetoric. How many of you think they are sheep? Let's see in church. Okay, we have very few sheep. How many think they are goats? I, I think you're just sure. I'm not lying to myself. Even when I woke up today, I came with a goat mentality. You're so sure you are a goat. He shall divide the sheep from the goat. Now listen to this. This is the time to make a decision whether you are a sheep or a goat. No, I've, I've read it. It's in the Bible. He shall divide the sheep and the goats. And you must be on one side. There's nothing like crossbreed of sheep and goat. When you think you are a crossbreed, just know you are a goat. If you, listen, for you, didn't you read the Bible in John chapter 10 verse 10? It says, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the thief. But before you get to John 10, 10, John chapter 10 from verses 1, Jesus starts talking about, I am the good shepherd. And, and that's why he says, my sheep know my voice and they come at my call. You have to be a sheep for you to listen to Jesus. Please, if you can't listen to Jesus, just know you're not a sheep. But preacher, finish. Okay. Then shall the king say to those on the right hand, the sheep, the king shall say to them, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from when? The foundation of the world. So there is a kingdom prepared for the sheep from the foundation of the world. Now listen. Listen. This is the point that I want you to now pay keen attention on because it's relevant to our, our moment as hospital chaplaincy ministry. How do you identify sheep from goats? This is it. Now listen. And I, and I want you to follow the Bible clearly even with punctuations. Now look at it. In verses 34 of Matthew 25 it says, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Full colon. Have you seen that? Have you seen a full colon in your Bible? Hey church, have you seen? Brother Edwin, in your Bible have you seen full colon? Full colon? Now let me tell you something. When you see a full colon, do you know what it means? It means whatever I am going to tell you explains what I have spoken about before. I am giving you additional information. So he's saying the blessed of my father who will inherit the kingdom. Look at their characteristics. These are their characteristics. And, and listen to the characteristics carefully. The Bible says, for I was unhungered. What made you to qualify as a sheep? I was unhungered and you gave me to eat. Listen, when I was angry, you fed me. 
that qualifies you as a sheep. And he said in the next one, I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. And now listen to this one. As, as we talk about hospital chaplaincy ministry. I was sick and you visited me. How many of you have ever taken part in chaplaincy ministry? Any chaplaincy? Any? How many have never? 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 Okay. Don't worry. There will be an altar call today. He says, I was hungry and you did not feed me. Now that is what is going to determine. He's saying, and, and I want you to ask the panel that is going to come up front because they, they will be taking your questions. I want you to ask them, how can I feed the angry? How can I visit the, the sick? Because the Bible says that if you did not visit me, you are not counted as the sheep. You didn't visit me. In fact, there is a quotation that I liked. I, I, I wanted to read this one. It's in the book, Ministry of Healing. I clipped it somewhere. In the book, Ministry of Healing, page 143, paragraph 3, the messenger to the remnant says, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs and won their confidence. Then he told them, follow me. After ministering to their needs. Beloved, there is a line of evangelism we have neglected. It is chaplaincy. He ministered to their needs. There are sick people. And let me ask you, how many of you have ever visited a sick person? You've ever visited? It may be your brother, your mother, your sister, your friend. You've ever visited a sick person? Why are you not participating in hospital chaplaincy work in this church? You don't need additional talent. This one doesn't need a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit on you. You can be able to visit the sick. We can be able to participate in prison ministry. And, and listen to this. That Jesus won their confidence by first reaching out to them. And then he told them, follow me. In fact, uh, when, when you continue reading from um, the, the, the book, uh, Ministry of Healing, Ministry of Healing has a, a wonderful right when it says in Ministry of Healing, page 144, paragraph 2, the messenger to the remnant says, God often reaches the hearts through our efforts to relieve physical suffering. When we go and pray for the sick, not only praying for your friends who are unwell, go and reach out to the sick people out there. In fact, in Councils on Health, page 32, paragraph 2, it says, I feel sad to see so few that have any real burden for their fellow men who are in darkness. Let not any truly converted soul settle down as a careless idler in the master's vineyard. Careless and idling in the master's vineyard. All power in heaven and on earth is given to Christ. And Christ can give you that power to reach out to others. In fact, when I was reading Christ's object lesson, page 229, paragraph 3, it said, We are not to wait for souls to come to us. We must seek them out where they are. When the word has been preached in the pulpit, the work has just but begun. What I am doing today, the work has just begun. The greater work that is to be done, there are multitudes out there who will never be reached by the gospel unless it is carried to them. Chaplaincy work is us going out there to take the gospel. Church members, can I challenge you? Allow me to challenge you. Can we dedicate our time? I've seen an announcement running for hospital chaplaincy. By the way, have you ever read the announcement on hospital chaplains in the bulletin? Never. We skip that part. Go read that part. We need to subscribe to hospital chaplains. In the afternoon like this, 
Can't you tell Sister Lily that I want to go and pray for somebody? If the temperatures are too hot and you can't stay here, rather than staying outside next to our vehicles and just storytelling and doing nothing, go and tell somebody about Jesus. Let's go. We have people who are dying and in need of a savior. Somebody will die before they know that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Can't we go and talk to them? Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let me finish for you these quotations. You know, when you have so many quotations, you feel like you need to read all of them. Let me read 143 paragraph 4 of Ministry of Healing, then I close this one. The rest of the quotations I think I will do in the panel. It says this. There is need of coming close to the people by personal effort. If less time was spent on sermonizing and more time was spent in personal ministry, the results would be great. We are talking of doubling our members, but we need to have personal ministry. Let's go. Do you know, when we are starting evangelistic campaign, there should be somebody whom we talked to in KNH, and they say, I want to go and meet the Savior, whom I have been told by these members from the church. We are a city church. We must bring members from around the city here. All these hospitals around us have been placed within the radius of new life so that we can reach them. And listen to this quotation. It says, the poor are to be relieved. The sick are to be cared for. The sorrowing and bereaved are to be comforted. The ignorant instructed. The inexperienced counseled. We are to weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Accompanied by the power of persuasion. The power of prayer. And the power of the love of God. This work will not, cannot be without fruit. That's how the messenger to the remnant says. That when we go with the power of persuasion, with the power of prayer, and with the power of the word of God and the love of God, this work cannot and will not be without fruit. The reason we have no real results is because we have not sought to reach out to people. Beloved, I beg you, my heart reaches out to church members. And I am begging you today that please let's go out and let's understand that God wants us to go and minister to souls out there. There are souls that are dying without Jesus. Hospital chaplaincy is not a chaplaincy for the few who want to go. It is a chaplaincy ministry for all of us. You have ever gone by the bedside of your sick mother, your sick child and prayed over there. God wants you to go and go to a church and pray for a stranger who doesn't know anything. God wants you to go and go to a hospital and go and say, by the way, this is now going to be difficult, but let me ask you, can you just go and say that, hey, is there a stranger here who has a hospital bill? I want to offset part of the bill. That is ministry. We can do much. Just walk to Coptic and tell them, I need to pray for somebody. Just tell me what is your name. That's hospital chaplaincy work. And we need to do something. Let me finish. The Bible says, the righteous will ask Jesus the question. Matthew 25, 37. The righteous will ask Jesus the question. When, Lord, did we see you hungry and feed thee? When did we see you hungry and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in, naked and clothed thee? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come unto thee? The king will answer and say, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done to one of the least of this, my brethren, you have done it to me. Now listen to that. When you do it to the least of my brethren, You've done it unto me. And what about those who did not do? Listen. Matthew 25 explains the sheep and the activity of the sheep. The contrary is, if you do not visit the sick, if you do not feed the angry, you are on the other side. You are, you are a goat. That's why the Bible doesn't even spend time explaining what the goats are doing. It doesn't. The Bible only says in verses 41, then he shall say to the ones on the left hand, how many of you are on the left? He will say to the ones on the left hand side, depart from me. Ah. 
Hey panelists, since I will be sitting with you, give me two minutes to read Luke chapter 13 verse 26. Let me read this one. This, that time is taken from the panelists. Uh, it, feels, it feels nice having such an understanding panel. A panel that you only point at them. Now listen, the ones on the left will be told, depart from me. But listen to this. Listen to this in, Ma in Luke chapter 13, verses, verses 26. It says, then ye shall begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in your presence. And you have taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not from whence you are. Depart from me. You will come and say, but we sat in new life. Hey, but you will say, I didn't see you in chaplaincy work. I didn't see you feeding the hungry. I didn't see you clothing the naked. I did not see you visiting the sick. Depart from me. Beloved, the biggest question I leave you with today. How can I feed the hungry? How can I clothe the naked? How can I visit the sick? How can I visit those who are in prison? That is the biggest question. I will answer it quickly because I know some of you may just want quick answers and leave after this. Let me tell you, you can do it this way. Join chaplaincy ministry. You don't necessarily have to be a full chaplain like Elder Tom or Sister Lily. You don't necessarily have to be a full chaplain, but in your heart, you can be a full chaplain. At least spare one day in a quarter when you are dedicating a Sabbath for visiting somebody who is sick. Spare one day in a quarter when you are dedicating a Sabbath for going to visit the prisoners. You have clothes that you have outgrown and you are still keeping them. They are filling your house. Give out those clothes. Clothe the naked. Let me tell you, God has given us a lot. We can give a lot. The forgotten signs of the end time. And let me tell you why these signs are forgotten is because we are fulfilling them easily. We have just decided we want to be gods. The Lord bless you. Let's rise up so that we close this session. And I can preach over and over. I don't want to over preach until you become goats. The message should leave you as sheep. Hey church, allow me to ask as we close this Bible study session on the forgotten signs of the end time. The signs that are deeply embedded in the church. Let me ask, is there somebody who is saying this afternoon the Lord has spoken to you and the Lord has revealed to you something? And you will, in your heart, you will want to do something for the Lord in line with what we've learned this afternoon, specifically the presentation we've done. If somebody, the Lord has spoken to you, let me see by Chauvin. Please, this is not a general appeal. Just be sincere. This is not a general appeal. Let me pray with those who have put up their hands. If you're sincere that you want the Lord to help you so that what is running through your mind, how you can be able to participate in the Lord's ministry, God can help you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you very much. With uplifted hands, we are saying that God, we are living in the last days, even shown by our indifference to the suffering of others. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 that the love of many will wax cold because iniquity shall abound. God, we live in a time when people are not loving at all. But these your children have said, Lord, we've heard you speak to us. We've heard the ministry you've given us through chaplaincy. And we want to be part of that ministry. Lord, help us. This uplifted hands. There's somebody who's saying, Lord, today afternoon you've spoken to me. And I want to make a decision that I may be part of this ministry of compassionate service to those whom we know and those whom we don't know. God, for that reason, somebody has put up their hands. Now, God, if they lack resources for visiting with the poor, give them the resources. If they lack the courage for speaking to those who are sick and almost giving up in life, God, give them the courage. God, if they lack the content or the right word to speak, God, fill their tongues with the right word. But above all, Lord, 
we want to be part of those whom you will say, come ye blessed of my father into the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Dear Lord, bless us. We will want to be counted in that number. Help us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you all and the Lord keep you all safe.